Jared Cannonier put a beating on Marvin Vittori last night in the main event of UFC Fight Night 75, getting a five-round decision over Marvin Vittori. And one of the things I don't see people talking enough about is Jared Cannonier potentially fighting Israel Adesanya in Sydney for a rematch. And I'm going to go through the fight last night and explain why I think this fight could actually happen and why I don't understand really why more people are not talking about this. But let's talk about the fight itself. Cannonier going into the fight as an underdog. I picked this one wrong. I did have the fight going the distance, though, but it just went to the wrong guy. Uh, Jared Cannonier absolutely uh, destroying Marvin Vittori. And look, Vittori had his moments in this fight as well. He did rock Cannonier a few times, but Cannonier nearly finished him in that second round. And I thought, I mean, if you saw me on the uh, on the Discord last night, if you're on my Patreon, I thought the fight was going to be over in the second. Jared was landing some heavy shots. Marvin was basically on his back, uh, you know, putting his hands up. And uh, Jared was landing some really, really, really good shots in that one. And just look at Marvin's face after the fight here, uh, you see a lot of damage taken. We've never seen Marvin Vittori take this much damage in a fight before. And you think of some of the fighters that he's competed against. Two fights against Israel Adesanya. The fight against Robert Whitaker, which was also very dominant on Rob's part. But Marvin's face never looked like this against Rob. Now, granted, that was a three-round fight as opposed to five. But even, even so, if we were going into the third round, Marvin's face was still not looking very great. Because Cannonier was really landing some serious shots in this one. So credit to uh, Jared Cannonier for getting it done here. And again, I think the idea going in was that you know what Jared at some point there's got to be a bit of a decline here there's a huge age gap here right 39 years old for Jared 29 for Marvin this was a good opportunity for Marvin to come out here and uh, you know remind people that he deserves a title shot again although it would have been tough because he's already lost twice to Israel at least with Jared Cannon here, he's only lost one time to Israel but the issue is, is that that fight was about a year ago, right? It took place in July on International Fight Week last year. So that's where things get a little bit complicated. And look, that's another reason why I think people aren't rushing to give Jared the credit here for wanting to fight Israel next. But here's the thing. We know this for a fact, okay? Dana White has already said, Dana White has suggested that Adesanya would headline UFC Sydney, um, which is taking place in uh, on September 10th, okay? So we're in June right now. Well, mid-June, mid I should say. Um, and we're talking about a fight in September. Now, all accounts are the winner of Robert Whitaker and Drake's Duplicy will, you know, is sort of ahead of Jared in this spot and would end up, uh, you know, getting to fight Israel in uh, in Sydney. And look, Israel doesn't like Drake's. I mean, there's been a lot of stuff in the news. That fight could make sense. I think more likely, though, Robert Whitaker wins that fight. But the question is, will they be ready going from July to September to take that fight? It's possible. But I think Jared has really emerged uh, as 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 the odds on favorite right now to get that fight at the time we're recording this because Jared did take some damage, but you saw him at the post-fight presser. Didn't seem like he had any major injuries or anything like that. And he told me in our interview prior to this fight that he'd be more than willing to go down to Sydney and fight Israel Adesanya. So I don't know why there's not a stronger case to see Jared take this fight. I know people feel like the result would be the same, but I don't know, man. Like the way Jared looked last night, if he can pressure Israel like he did Marvin Vittori last night, I think he's got a chance for sure. And I think in their first fight, Jared really didn't look like that. And it's not taking anything away from how great Israel Adesanya is. I just think the way Jared performed last night definitely has to open some eyes as far as him being a contender again in the division and not to mention he set the record last night for significant strikes in a middleweight fight I believe um, we got the stats here from UFC stats look at this significant strikes 241 to 153 like that's impressive and again it's just because Marvin is so tough that he that he didn't get finished but I think most middleweights what Jared did to Marvin last night would probably be knocked out in the second round like Marvin has a chin on him and took some serious years off his career with the beating there so like I said I have no issue if Jared Cannonier would get the next title shot against Israel assuming there were no other options I guess the only other options like I said are Robert Whitaker and Drake is duplicy the winner of that I've said this before as a dark horse chance. I think there's a possibility if Abus beats Sean Strickland, he inserts into that conversation. If Strickland wins now, I don't think you can really make the case for Strickland fighting Israel next, even though it's a fresh matchup, because Jared already has a win over him not that long ago. In fact, it was Jared's last fight that uh, before this one that he got the win over Sean Strickland. So I think Strickland, regardless of if he wins against Abus Magomedov on July 1st, he should not get the next title shot against Israel because Jared, like I said, has a recent win over him. That would be tough to do. And I know that fight was close. Some people feel like Sean did enough to win, but regardless, list Jared's the one who got his hand raised you got to give it to them him him there the only other option I could see next for Jared and he was asked about it last night and it's something I brought up in my interview with Jared Cannonier as well is Hamzat Chimaev um Chimaev not currently ranked obviously a lot of hype here a lot of people people feel like he could bring some life into the 185 pound division and I've said this numerous times on my show um I don't think we're ever going to see Chimaev fight at 170 again I, I think the whole weight cut fiasco he had uh with the whole um you know fight with um uh who's he supposed to fight was it Oh, geez. Why am I getting mixed up here? 
I'm losing my mind here. It's Father's Day, guys. Uh, I'm not exactly uh, operating uh, very well here. Who was he originally supposed to fight? Was it Kevin Holland? No, he fought Holland, and the original fight was against uh, Nate Diaz. That's right. How could I forget? Anyways, um, I, I think there was something to that whole weight miss, and I just don't think we'll see him fight at 170. And all this talk about him and Usman, remember Dana White shut that down. I told you guys that fight well, probably wasn't going to happen, and it doesn't look like it will. So he's going to insert into middleweight. I think Jared's the perfect candidate here because Jared has pretty much fought most of these fighters already. Um, you know, the rest of them are kind of booked up. Whitaker's booked up. Pereira's not in the division, which, by the way, if you have a fight booked in a different weight class, you should be out of the rankings. Pereira shouldn't be at middleweight anymore, as far as I'm concerned, especially since it looks like he's not coming back. Um, but yeah, Costa's booked up. Dracus is booked up. Strickland, he already fought. Brunson is retired, as far as I know. I suppose Roman Delize, but how does that make sense? He beats number three, and then he's got to fight number nine. Doesn't make any sense there. So um, I think Chimaev is sort of the outside option here. For Jared's next fight and again he has expressed interest in having that but Jared basically said that I would only take that that fight against Hamzat Chimaev if it was for a title like if it was title implications and that could realistically happen here and I think that's completely fair now does the UFC want to go that route like what happens if Jared beats Hamzat Chimaev I'm just saying here like what if he beats him then you've got, you know, guys pushing close to 40, getting a title shot next. And Chimaev has just wasted any sort of potential of him fighting for a title. Although I still maintain if Chimaev wants to fight Israel for the middleweight title, he's got to beat a top five guy. He doesn't have a single ranked win in that weight class. And we've been over this a million times in this channel. I am big on getting ranked wins as far as getting big opportunities here. So that's kind of my thoughts on the, the other option here for Jared. But I honestly think right now Jared should be the front runner to fight Israel. Again, they need someone to headline that card. The UFC does too many events. Talked about this time and time again and Israel wants to fight. You don't want to keep him on the shelf. I think Jared is a perfect option here. And honestly, if you watch that fight last night, I don't get how fans would be upset with Jared fighting Israel again, just because it was an entertaining fight. Like that's last night's fight against Marvin Vittori, in my opinion, was one of the top fights we saw this year. Tons of heart by both guys. The thing that really impressed me the most, and again, I have a full breakdown of this um, on my Patreon, uh, recapping the entire card, but just the recovery time of both fighters. Like Cannonier looked like Vittori was, I mean, Vittori looked like he was done. And then he was able to come back and still Still land some shots and Jared himself got rocked a few times early in the fight and uh, and he recovered as well. So that was extremely impressive. Two guys with extremely granite chins uh, going out there and looking very impressive here. So that that to me really sort of stood out. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think with Jared, like I said, setting the record yesterday for most significant strikes in the middleweight fight. Um, the fact that no one's done this mar to Marvin Vittori, like I mentioned, including Whitaker in terms of damage, right? Like Whitaker beat him decisively. I don't think there's any debate there, but I just think the amount of damage that Vittori took, um, that's something for sure that, um, you know, is impressive. So that that's why, like, I am going to be the guy here and I, I don't care if I'm on an island here. I know there's going to be a lot of people who disagree with me, but I don't have a single issue with Jared Cannonier fighting Israel Adesanya in a rematch in Sydney for the title. And here's the other thing too for Jared. You know, you give him this fight, let's say it doesn't go his way. Who's to say Jared just can't call it a career at this point? You know what I mean? Like he's 39. What are you getting with them? You're not going to get that many more big marquee fights for him. So I think even from that perspective, it makes sense just to, you know, can he get, can he have another chance at the title? Because if he loses again, Jared does, then that's it. He's not going to fight for the title again, regardless of who the champion is. At his age, I just don't see him making another, you know, big run. Uh, again, we're looking really far ahead here, but you kind of get where I'm going with is that, you know, you might as well get what you can with Jared because right now, um, you know, the younger guy in Vittori, is not someone that's anywhere close. And, and let's sort of end on that. This is another fight for Marvin Vittori that has put him back, you know, behind the eight ball. I realize he's only 29 years old, but he's lost a number of key fights now. He's lost the two fights to Adesanya. He's lost to Robert Whitaker in a fight which was not competitive. Remember, Rob dominated that fight. Um, and then there was the fight with um, uh, Roman Delize, which to me, like I've said this before, I think you can make a case for Roman winning that fight here. I mean, even Whitaker, that was a, um, like I said, he didn't win a single round in that fight against Whitaker, did beat Delize, did have the win over Paulo Costa, although what do you get with Costa these days? Um, so I don't really know where Vittori fits in the, into the weight class here. Like, I'm kind of looking at the rankings right now as far as who he should fight next. I mean, I'm kind of, my gut feeling is if Dracus loses to Robert Whitaker, I think Dracus and Vittori is the fight you make next. But honestly, with how Vittori looked last night, because we've seen him get that step up against contenders, I don't know how he's going to look here. And I, I think Dracus has the ability to beat Vittori. I do. And I'm not trying to be hard on Marvin Vittori here. I just think this idea of him being like, like, I think what saved him last night, honestly, like I think it would have been a second round finish is just his durability and chin. And that will serve him very far. But here's my thing with Vittori. And I even said this on the breakdown. Vittori's good everywhere, but he doesn't excel in any particular area. He doesn't have any major knockout power. He doesn't have like an exceptional ground game where he's submitting guys left, right and center. These are all things that I kind of look at with Vittori where I'm kind of like, 
I don't know. Like, so I, I don't really know where Vittori sort of fits in the picture here, but I mean, the chances of him fighting for a title now are going to be really slim because he's going to have to go on some crazy run. And I don't know, looking at some of the up and comers here, even a guy like Sean Strickland, I don't think they'll fight because they train together, but um, even like a Strickland, I would probably favor over Vittori right now just because Vittori had such a poor showing last night. And granted, he did land some good shots on Jared, just the amount of damage he took. That's got to really hurt his career here a little bit. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Vittori. I, I think he's really got to turn things around somehow. Otherwise, we're not going to be talking about him in the contender spot any further. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you think Jared Cannonier has done enough to earn a rematch again? Back-to-back -back wins over two highly ranked guys in Sean Strickland and Marvin Vittori. He breaks that record last night for significant strikes. That's got to count for something, everyone. So, you know, just to summarize, I think Vittori has a strong case to fight Israel. If he doesn't, I think Hamzat Chimaev's the fight. I don't think there's any other fight that makes sense here for Jared at this point. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Father's Day to any of the dads out there watching this. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon.